This is the Corsair Xenion Flex, the world's first 45 inch bendable OLED panel gaming monitor. Those sounds are normal by the way, supposed to do that. I'm happy to get my hands on it early so we can check it out on the channel, but first some specs on this bad boy. So this is a 45 inch ultra wide with a 3440 by 1440 p resolution. It's right there in between a traditional 34 inch ultra wide and a 49 inch super ultra wide. So one of the big differences between this monitor and the other monitors out there aside from the bending feature of course is the fact that you get a 21 by 9 aspect ratio as opposed to a 32 by 9 from a super ultra wide like the G9 from Samsung. This means you get more vertical screen real estate, which in my opinion is a much better field of view experience. 32 by 9 is just too wide and not practical in a lot of scenarios. If a 34 inch ultra wide is too small and a 49 inch super ultra wide is too large, then I feel like this 45 inch ultra wide would be the best middle ground. Can we just take a step back and appreciate how freaking thin these bezels are? I mean, this looks incredible. The Flex also features an OLED panel and a 240 hertz refresh rate with a crazy 0.3 millisecond response time. And this thing is no joke when it comes to gaming, which we will check out later in this video. It even passed the UFO test with flying colors. I didn't notice any ghosting or corona artifacts. So the bendable OLED technology is actually developed by the OLED experts at LG, which is reassuring knowing that a reputable and experienced company is behind the design. You are able to basically set the curve of the display from completely flat to 800 R. And to actually bend the display, it's very simple. There are two handlebars attached on each side of the monitor. You can pull this out and use it to bend the monitor very easily. And once you're done, you basically just push it back inside. You don't have to use the handles if you don't want to, but it's there for convenience and to also prevent your hands from touching the actual display. If you love having that display wrap around your face for that immersive experience, you can have that. But if you're into MOBAs or want to share your screen with your friends, then you can go flat whenever you want. You basically get the best of both worlds here. The panel is expected to last over 10,000 bends. So about 5.5 years if you bend the display five times a day for seven days a week. Watching content is also amazing on this display. Because it's an OLED panel, you get those insane deep blacks with near perfect viewing angles. I haven't noticed any color distortion even when looking at it from the sides. Another reason why I think 21 by 9 is so much better than 32 by 9 is the fact that you can watch movies in its natural format. No black bars on the top or bottom. Combine that with the improved OLED HDR and you really get that theater experience right at your setup. The Corsair Xenion Flex does have an anti-glare matte surface which does a pretty good job in blocking out reflection so if you do sit next to the window it's not going to be a concern. All right let's talk about ports real quick. The Xenion Flex has a butt Load of connectivity. It's actually all hooked up to its stand. So on the front you have two USB 3 ports followed by a headphone jack and on the right side you have an input select, the power button and a joystick which gives you access to the OSD. And in the back you have two additional USB 3 ports, two USB type C, one of which supports fast charging up to 60 watts so you can plug in a laptop and have it powered essentially and for input you have two HDMI and one display port. So I was told this monitor has a very color accurate panel, 99% of DCI P3. I was gonna hook up my spider utility and confirm this but I was told I couldn't because after all this is a prototype so uh, but when I do get the actual working unit in I will be testing that in the full review later this year. Now for productivity, the extra screen real estate comes in very handy. I was able to split multiple windows on one screen and it's a lot more practical compared to a 32 by 9 screen. I'm actually able to see all the windows comfortably without having to lean in towards the edges on a much wider monitor. Now with that said, I still caught myself scanning the monitor from side to side, which is to be expected. I mean, it's a massive monitor. It's practically like sticking two 27 inch monitors side by side. So another thing the monitor actually does, and I've noticed this as I was recording this video, is that the panel will dim itself when it's idling between five to 10 minutes. So if I'm go down here, for example, change the wallpaper. As you can see, the panel went back to normal. So increase the brightness and it basically does this to prevent burn-in. So this will extend the life of the panel. I mean, you still get three years warranty, but you know, it's still nice that a monitor does that when you're not using it. So the monitor doesn't come with any built-in speakers, which if I'm being honest, I don't think anybody cares about built-in speakers anymore. If you're gonna be spending this kind of money on a monitor, you're gonna be using some nice speakers or headphones with it. There is one thing I don't like about the monitor, at least on the prototype, and that is the built-in stand. It doesn't offer a lot of adjustability and it's not VESA compatible, so you can't mount this against a wall or a desk mount. And I really think that's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people. The only adjustment you can do is tilt, and it's cool that they even 
actually provided you a dedicated handlebar on the bottom to prevent your hands from touching the screen. A lot of us prefer mounting our monitors. It gives us more flexibility, but it also just looks a lot cleaner. I know the stand is a very essential part of this monitor because without it, it won't function. All the connectivity is basically baked inside the stand. So, um, but what about this? What if we kept this portion of the stand, got rid of the base, moved all the ports to the sides or even the bottom over here in the front and add a base mount option in the back? That way we can still mount the monitor if we want, but also still have access to all the ports. You know, just something to think about for version two possibly next year for the Corsair rep that's watching this video. All right, so the first game we're loading up is Cyberpunk 2077. This is probably as immersive as we can get playing on this more. Oh my God, dude, what? This is unreal. <laughs> This is insane! This is so immersive. It honestly just feels like I'm in the game. It's literally wrapping around my face. Dude, this is actually crazy. This is gonna change the way we play games. This is actually insane. I can get used to this. I can actually play... I might go back to play Cyberpunk on this monitor. I've played on a curved ultrawide before, so this isn't new, but the extra vertical real estate that we're given on this monitor makes a huge difference. I still have to scan my head to kind of look at my ammo and then my utilities on, on the bottom left. So there's going to be some head movement for sure. You can't see everything when you keep your head straight. You kind of have to just move around because of how massive the screen is. I'm trying to find a way to explain this to you guys. It feels like you're playing a game on a movie theater screen. That's like the best <laughs> description I can give you. Let me see if I can give you guys a better POV. This is literally what it feels like playing this game. I'm trying to give you guys like the most accurate representation, but you have to really see this in person. Like it's actually, it's nuts. It's actually nuts. Let's go flat. Let's see, um, let's see what flat looks like. No, no, it doesn't look good. It just looks so weird. I would never go flat. I don't see how anybody would go flat if we have an option to stay curved. It's such a better experience when, when gaming and especially watching content or if you're watching movies, you want to you wanna keep the monitor curved without a doubt. The only time I would go flat is if I'm editing a video that involves a lot of straight lines. You can't get that on a curved panel, so obviously I would prefer to work on a flatter panel to get straight lines, symmetry, center points, all that. That's the only reason I would go flat. Or if I have somebody sitting next to me and we're watching something, obviously they get a very different experience on a curved panel sitting next to me so i'll make it straight for them but other than those two scenarios i will never go flat that curved is the way to be honest i right, try another game i'm gonna try doom next i feel like for fps shooters it's more on the casual side than it is for competitive like i would not play warzone on this monitor a game like doom is definitely more fun because it's not serious right like you're just you're playing it to have fun but it really does feel like i'm in the game like my peripheral visions are all monitor. I can't even see the sides of my room, you guys. It's insane. Oh, dude, this is, this is nuts. This really does change the way you play the game, honestly. It's such a big difference. Coming from a regular 16 by 9 monitor or just a regular, you know, ultra wide. And I'm not even that close to the monitor. You guys can see I'm... Uh, have a pretty good distance. There's just so much going on on the screen that my eyes can't process everything. Maybe it's the game, <laughs> to be honest, but it's it's crazy. There's just too much going on. I think the monitor size has to do with it as well. It's, it's definitely a contributing factor. Okay, I, 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 Doom is a uh, Doom is a little bit too much. It's uh, let's switch to a different game. All right, next we're doing Forza Horizon Five. This is definitely more on the casual side, but we're getting black borders for some reason. Does this not support? The 3440, it should. Let's see if we can change the settings. Let's put 240. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking, baby. So much better. I know I shouldn't be playing this game on a keyboard and mouse, but I don't have my PS5 controller on me. But oh my god. Racing, I can see racing games being so fun on this monitor. Especially if you sit back a little bit more, if you're not so close to the screen. I feel like this is this is a vibe. See how I'm constantly scanning the monitor to like see the map and my speed? That can be very distracting when you're racing. 
So I feel like if I sit back a little bit more, I don't have to constantly look down on the corner of the screen. I mean, you're gonna be sitting away from your monitor anyways because you're gonna be playing on a controller with Forza Horizon 5. So I don't think you're gonna be running into that issue, to be honest. All right, let's go, um, let's go flat, even though I know I'm not gonna like it. I do love the audible clicks. That basically tells you to stop bending. So that way you're not damaging your screen. Yeah, flat just isn't it. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I think curved is definitely the way to go. Regardless of what game you're playing. So what is something like this gonna cost you guys? Well, we don't know the price. All we know is that it's gonna be in production quarter four of this year, and it's gonna be attractively priced. If I had to guess, it's gonna be over $1,000, probably closer to 1,500 bucks, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes over the $1,500 price because this is pretty much the first of its kind, the only one of its kind at the moment. Um, once we start to see more models like this, then I think we'll get more competitive pricing, but that still remains to be seen. If you guys wanna learn more about the Corsair Xenion Flex, I'll drop a link to it down below. I will be getting a retail unit for me to do more testing and gaming on later this year. So if you guys are interested for that, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.